This channel will continue to share many strange and terrifying mysteries, both from war, from our service members and veterans, and in the smoke pit. But far from stories about paranormal entities or unsolved mysteries, the incredible heroism of those who have volunteered to fight in a time of war is no less an unusual topic. At any given time, less than 1% of the American population can be counted among those in our active military. And although the military is a diverse organization with many important occupations to serve in, there are admittedly few among that small percentage that have ever or will ever serve in active combat. We are inspired by the brave actions of those who lost their lives in war, but we cannot imagine the fear or terrible things they had to overcome in their final moments. Many of them died protecting their friends with little thought given for their own safety. Many of them died screaming for their mother and father or for forgiveness. As we approach this year's Memorial Day, I wanted to take some time to read out the award citations of several men who were killed in Vietnam and later awarded the Medal of Honor for their actions. These men are only a small sampling of the heroism displayed in war. Private First Class Louis Albanese, U.S. Army, Company Bravo, 5th Battalion, 7th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division, Air Mobile. December 1st, 1966. Citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action, at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, PFC Albanese's platoon, while advancing through densely covered terrain to establish a blocking position, received intense automatic weapons fire from close range. As other members maneuvered to assault the enemy position, PFC Albanese was ordered to provide security for the left flank of the platoon. Suddenly, the left flank received fire from enemy located in a well-concealed ditch. Realizing the imminent danger to his comrades from this fire, PFC Albanese fixed his bayonet and moved aggressively into the ditch. His actions silenced the sniper fire, enabling the platoon to resume movement toward the main enemy position. As the platoon continued to advance, the sound of heavy firing emanated from the left flank from a pitched battle that ensued in the ditch which PFC Albanese had entered. The ditch was actually a well-organized complex of enemy defenses designed to bring devastating flanking fire on the forces attacking the main position. PFC Albanese, disregarding the danger to himself, advanced 100 meters along the trench and killed six of the snipers who were armed with automatic weapons. Having exhausted his ammunition, PFC Albanese was mortally wounded when he engaged and killed two more enemy soldiers in fierce, hand-to-hand -hand combat. His unparalleled actions saved the lives of many members of his platoon who otherwise would have fallen to the sniper fire from the ditch and enabled his platoon to successfully advance against an enemy force of overwhelming numerical superiority. PFC Albanese's extraordinary heroism and supreme dedication to his comrades were commensurate with the finest traditions of the military service and remain a tribute to himself, his unit, and the U.S. Army. Sergeant First Class Matthew Leonard, U.S. Army, Company Bravo, 1st Battalion, 16th Infantry, 1st Infantry Division, February 28, 1967. Citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, his platoon was suddenly attacked by a large enemy force employing small arms, automatic weapons, and hand grenades. Although the platoon leader and several other key leaders were among the first wounded, Sergeant Leonard quickly rallied his men to throw back the initial enemy assaults. During the short pause that followed, he organized a defensive perimeter, redistributed ammunition, and inspired his comrades through his forceful leadership and words of encouragement. Noticing a wounded companion outside the perimeter, he dragged the man back to safety, but was struck by a sniper's bullet, which shattered his left hand. Refusing medical attention and continuously exposing himself to the increasing fire as the enemy again assaulted the perimeter, Sergeant Leonard moved from position to position to direct the fire of his men against the well-camouflaged enemy. Under the cover of the main attack, the enemy moved a machine gun into a location where it could sweep the entire perimeter. This threat was magnified when the platoon machine gun in the area malfunctioned. 
Sergeant Leonard quickly crawled to the gun position and was helping to clear the malfunction when the gunner and other men in the vicinity were wounded by fire from the enemy machine gun. Sergeant Leonard rose to his feet, charged the enemy gun, and destroyed the hostile crew despite being hit several times by enemy fire. He moved to a tree, propped himself against it, and continued to engage the enemy until he succumbed to his many wounds. His fighting spirit, heroic leadership, and valiant acts inspired the remaining members of his platoon to hold back the enemy until assistance arrived. Sergeant Leonard's profound courage and devotion to his men are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service, and his gallant actions reflect great credit upon himself and the U.S. Army. Lieutenant Vincent Robert Capodano, U.S. Navy, Chaplain Corps, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, 1st Marine Division, Reinforcement, Fleet Marine Force, September 4, 1967. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty as Chaplain of the 3rd Battalion in connection with operations against enemy forces. In response to reports that the 2nd Platoon of Mike Company was in danger of being overrun by a massed enemy assaulting force, Lieutenant Capodano left the relative safety of the company command post and ran through an open area raked with fire directly to the beleaguered platoon. Disregarding the intense enemy small arms, automatic weapons, and mortar fire, he moved about the battlefield, administering last rites to the dying and giving medical aid to the wounded. When an exploding mortar round inflicted multiple painful wounds to his arms and legs and severed a portion of his right hand, he steadfastly refused all medical aid. Instead, he directed the corpsmen to help their wounded comrades and, with calm vigor, continued to move about the battlefield as he provided encouragement by voice and example to the valiant Marines. Upon encountering a wounded corpsman in the direct line of fire of an enemy machine gunner positioned approximately 15 yards away, Lieutenant Capodano rushed in a daring attempt to aid and assist the mortally wounded corpsman. At that instant, only inches from his goal, he was struck down by a burst of machine gun fire. By his heroic conduct on the battlefield and his inspiring example, Lieutenant Capodano upheld the finest traditions of the U.S. Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life in the cause of freedom. Chief Master Sergeant Richard L. Etchberger, U.S. Air Force, 1043rd Radar Evaluation Squadron, March 11, 1968. Citation for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Chief Etchberger and his team of technicians were manning a top-secret defensive position at Lima Site 85 when the base was overrun by an enemy ground force. Receiving sustained and withering heavy artillery attacks directly upon his unit's position, Chief Etchberger's entire crew lay dead or severely wounded. Despite having received little or no combat training, Chief Etchberger single-handedly held off the enemy with an M16 while simultaneously directing airstrikes into the area and calling for air rescue. Because of his fierce defense and heroic and selfless actions, he was able to deny the enemy access to his position and save the lives of his remaining crew. With the arrival of the rescue aircraft, Chief Etchberger, without hesitation, repeatedly and deliberately risked his own life, exposing himself to heavy enemy fire in order to place three surviving wounded comrades into rescue slings hanging from the hovering helicopter waiting to airlift them to safety. With his remaining crew safely aboard, Chief Etchberger finally climbed into an evacuation sling himself, only to be fatally wounded by the enemy ground fire as he was being raised into the aircraft. Chief Etchberger's bravery and determination in the face of persistent enemy fire and overwhelming odds are in keeping with the highest standards of performance and traditions of military service. Chief Etchberger's gallantry, self-sacrifice, and profound concern for his fellow men at risk of his life, above and beyond the call of duty, reflect the highest credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Specialist, 4th Class, Hector Santiago Colon, U.S. Army, Company Bravo, 5th Battalion, 7th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, June 28, 1968. Citation for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Specialist Santiago Colon distinguished himself at the cost of his life while serving as a gunner in the mortar platoon of Company Bravo. While serving as a perimeter sentry, Specialist Santiago Colon heard distinct movement in the heavily wooded area to his front and flanks. 
Immediately, he alerted his fellow sentries in the area to move to their foxholes and remain alert for any enemy probing forces. From the wooded area around his position, heavy enemy automatic weapons and small arms fire suddenly broke out, but the extreme darkness rendered difficult the precise location and identification of the hostile force. Only the muzzle flashes from the enemy weapons indicated their positions. Specialist Santiago Colon and the other members of his platoon immediately began to repel the attackers, utilizing hand grenades, anti-personnel mines, and small arms fire. Due to the heavy volume of enemy fire and exploding grenades around them, a North Vietnamese soldier was able to crawl, undetected, to their position. Suddenly, the enemy lobbed a hand grenade into Specialist Santiago Colon's foxhole. Realizing that there was no time to throw the grenade out of his position, Specialist Santiago Colon retrieved the grenade, tucked it into his stomach, and turning away from his comrades, absorbed the full impact of the blast. His heroic self-sacrifice saved the lives of those who occupied the foxhole with him, and provided them with the inspiration to continue fighting until they had forced the enemy to retreat from the perimeter. By his gallantry at the cost of his life, and in the highest traditions of the military service, Specialist 4th Class Santiago Colon has reflected great credit upon himself, his unit, and the U.S. Army. Private First Class, Oscar Palmer Austin, U.S. Marine Corps, Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division, Reinforcement, Fleet Marine Force, February 23rd, 1969. Citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while serving as an assistant machine gunner with Echo Company in connection with operations against enemy forces, during the early morning hours, PFC Austin's observation post was subjected to a fierce ground attack by a large North Vietnamese army force supported by a heavy volume of hand grenades, satchel charges, and small arms fire. Observing that one of his wounded companions had fallen unconscious in a position dangerously exposed to the hostile fire, PFC Austin unhesitatingly left the relative security of his fighting hole and with complete disregard for his safety, raced across the fire-swept terrain to assist the Marine to a covered location. As he neared the casualty, he observed an enemy grenade land nearby and, reacting instantly, leapt between the injured Marine and the lethal object, absorbing the effects of its detonation. As he ignored his painful injuries and turned to examine the wounded man, he saw a North Vietnamese Army soldier aiming a weapon at his unconscious companion. With full knowledge of the probable consequences and thinking only to protect the Marine, PFC Austin resolutely threw himself between the casualty and the hostile soldier, and in doing so, was mortally wounded. PFC Austin's indomitable courage, inspiring initiative, and selfless devotion to duty upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the U.S. Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country. Corporal Terry Teruo Kawamura, U.S. Army, 173rd Engineer Company, 173rd Airborne Brigade, March 20th, 1969. Citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Corporal Kawamura distinguished himself by heroic action while serving as a member of the 173rd Engineer Company. An enemy demolition team infiltrated the unit headquarters area and opened fire with automatic weapons. Disregarding the intense fire, Corporal Kawamura ran for his weapon at that moment, a violent explosion tore a hole in the roof and stunned the occupants of the room. Corporal Kawamura jumped to his feet, secured his weapon, and as he ran toward the door to return the enemy fire, he observed that another explosive charge had been thrown through the hole in the roof to the floor. He immediately realized that two stunned fellow soldiers were in great peril and shouted a warning. Although in a position to escape, Corporal Kawamura unhesitatingly wheeled around and threw himself on the charge. In completely disregarding his safety, Corporal Kawamura prevented serious injury or death to several members of his unit. The extraordinary courage and selflessness displayed by Corporal Kawamura are in the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the U.S. Army. Specialist 4th Class, Leonard L. Alvarado, U.S. Army, Company Delta, 2nd Battalion, 12th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division Air Mobile, August 12th, 1969. Citation. Specialist 4 Leonard L. Alvarado distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty 
while serving as a rifleman with Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 12th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division Air Mobile, during combat operations against an armed enemy in Phu Quoc Province, Republic of Vietnam, on August 12, 1969. On that day, a Specialist 4 Alvarado and a small reaction force moved through dense jungle en route to a beleaguered friendly platoon, Specialist Alvarado detected enemy movement and opened fire. Despite his quick reaction, Specialist Alvarado and his comrades were soon pinned down by the hostile force that blocked the path to the trap platoon. Specialist Alvarado quickly moved forward through the hostile machine gun fire in order to engage the enemy troops. Suddenly, an enemy grenade exploded nearby, wounding and momentarily stunning him. Retaliating immediately, he killed the grenadier, just as another enemy barrage wounded him again. Specialist Alvarado crawled forward through the fusillade to pull several comrades back within the hastily formed perimeter. Realizing his element needed to break away from the hostile force, Specialist Alvarado began maneuvering forward, alone. Though repeatedly thrown to the ground by exploding satchel charges, he continued advancing and firing, silencing several emplacements, including one enemy machine gun position. From his dangerous forward position, he persistently laid suppressive fire on the hostile forces, and after the enemy troops had broken contact, his comrades discovered that he had succumbed to his wounds. Specialist for Alvarado's extraordinary heroism and selflessness at the cost of his own life, above and beyond the call of duty, are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Major William Edward Adams U.S. Army, 227th Assault Helicopter Company, 52nd Aviation Battalion, 17th Aviation Group, 1st Aviation Brigade, May 25, 1971. Citation. Major Adams distinguished himself on 25th May 1971 while serving as a helicopter pilot in Kontum Province in the Republic of Vietnam. On that date, Major Adams volunteered to fly a lightly armed helicopter in an attempt to evacuate three seriously wounded soldiers from a small fire base which was under attack by a large enemy force. He made the decision with full knowledge that numerous anti-aircraft weapons were positioned around the base and that the clear weather would afford the enemy gunners an unobstructed view of all routes into the base. As he approached the base, the enemy gunners opened fire with heavy machine guns, rocket-propelled grenades, and small arms. Undaunted by the fusillade, he continued his approach, determined to accomplish the mission. Displaying tremendous courage under fire, he calmly directed the attacks of supporting gunships while maintaining absolute control of the helicopter he was flying. He landed the aircraft at the firebase despite the ever-increasing enemy fire and calmly waited until the wounded soldiers were placed on board. As his aircraft departed from the firebase, it was struck and seriously damaged by enemy anti-aircraft fire and began descending. Flying with exceptional skill, he immediately regained control of the crippled aircraft and attempted a controlled landing. Despite his valiant efforts, the helicopter exploded, overturned, and plummeted to the earth amid the hail of enemy fire. Major Adams' conspicuous gallantry, intrepidity, and humanitarian regard for his fellow man were in keeping with the most cherished traditions of the military service and reflected utmost credit on him and the U.S. Army. Even after joining the military myself, I certainly might have found it difficult to relate to these men. I dare say few of us could ever truly know what we would do in those same harrowing situations. It's easy to say we would do the same thing as they did, but while they were of course not perfect, as none of us are, regardless of their faults or their own self-doubts, in their final moments, these men demonstrated who they really were. You might have noticed that these men represent each of the American service branches of the military that fought in Vietnam. The Army, the Marines, the Navy, and the Air Force. These men came from diverse backgrounds, family histories, and cultural traditions. They likely held different beliefs about the world, and certainly about how they felt about the war they were fighting in. But although they may not have always agreed with one another, nor did they look like one another, their outward appearance and their view of the world, clearly, had nothing to do with the love, the respect, and the ultimate sacrifice they demonstrated for their country, their families, their friends, and their fellow men. We can only hope to honor their selfless sacrifice and to follow their example in our own lives. 
Before we end this episode, I did have something personal to share with you, and perhaps to make a bold request. If you saw the episodes regarding the story of Roy Benavides and his heroic actions in Vietnam, one of the men he rescued from that jungle clearing was a special operations soldier named Lloyd Mousseau, or Frenchie, as his friends knew him. Unfortunately, despite surviving long enough to be placed on a medevac helicopter, along with Roy, while the two of them held hands on their way to the nearest field hospital, shortly before landing, Roy felt his friend's hand go limp. He had succumbed to his injuries. I recently shared a short video on the channel to share with you that Lloyd's daughter, Kathy, had watched the episodes and contacted me. At the time of his death, Kathy was only three years old, and the last letter that Lloyd had sent his family before going on his final mission was a birthday card for her. She told me that she still has the birthday card and has spent the last 50 years trying to learn as much about her father as she could. And every Memorial Day, she and her family take a trip to the cemetery where he's buried in Long Beach, California. And I'm honored to say that she invited me to join her family, which I will be doing. She told me that along with her father's grave, they always take the time to plant small American flags on as many of the other veterans' graves as they can, at least until they run out of flags. Well, the cemetery has at least 15,000 graves, although I'm not sure how many of them are those of service members. So if you feel inclined to do so, and you would like to help me purchase more flags for us to place on the graves of as many veterans as we can find there, I would be very grateful. If you are local to the Long Beach area, I would also welcome you to join us in paying respects to Lloyd and the other veterans resting there. I will post the specific details about the address and the time in the description and at the top of the comment section. The flags are maybe 35 cents a piece, so as many flags as we can get, we will try not to miss a single veteran. How can you donate? Below the video is a small heart-shaped button with a thanks next to it, and that button will allow you to make a small donation for us to purchase flags with. It will also allow you to post a special highlighted comment, so feel free to share any of your own thoughts for the audience, for Kathy and her family, or for any of us who have lost loved ones serving in the military. I will, of course, take pictures and share those with you via Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching. Have a safe and memorable weekend, and I will see you in the next episode. Smell a wine and cheap perfume. The smile they can share the night. It goes on and on and on and on. Strangers. Hey guys, rather than leaving this video on such a somber note, I thought here in the credits I could just share with you some of the funnier stuff uh, from my time in the in the Marines. Um, I'm just going to show you these videos that were taken while my team was in the Philippines, uh, which include uh, my good buddy Jimmy who was unfortunately killed in a helicopter crash in 2018. But he was an absolute clown, so I figured, you know, we should celebrate the, uh, the good times as much as we, we miss these guys. Just some general context, uh, we were training in the Philippines, and during our downtime in the evening, the Filmars had no qualms with getting drunk in training, and, well, we thought went in Rome, so... They invited us over, and although our superiors would probably have not wanted us drinking, I thought, well, what they don't know can't hurt them, right? So we had a good time. And the videos are just us chatting with the locals, the, the Philippine Marines, the Filmars were translating for us and reenacting YouTube videos that were funny at the time. And uh, the last part, Jimmy uh, just doing his best to teach everyone how to do a toast in his own special way which I will be doing in his honor on Memorial Day. All right, so thanks to uh, very many demonstrations up on YouTube. So we have the Sergeant Lamana, the very profound instructor. They get me in this video. Uh, here we go. Yeah. 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 Uh, you're getting one or two more shots. Yeah, yeah. for the two weeks of travel. Yeah. And they say, uh, come fly. Come fly. In Japan. We've been here with the Japanese. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. All right, so we'll do like a. Hey. La, 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 la. How about three? Three times? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm ready. I'm, I'm recording right now. Let us read this. We can edit. La 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 la